little theme music for the opening. So in this video, I'm rolling with Brian, Rory, and Joe. All three are blue belts at various levels. It's hard to compare them. They all have different strengths. They're all super strong, much stronger than me. I got to start working out. So here we go. You see me in this position a lot. It's like a half guard, but I have my back to my opponent. Basically what I look to do is get in both hooks, my left and right hook of my legs under his one leg. And that allows me to lift him and spin him and escape. <clears throat> but he stood up to defend it and pulled his leg out, which was very good of Brian. I've rolled with him a few times and he's starting to know what I like to do. When I roll with Brian, I tend to be more responsive. I let him do something and then I respond with something. I do this with a lot of people, but I especially do it with guys like Brian that allows him a chance to think. So here I am, I have my hook under his leg. I have hooks on both legs. And at this point, he's starting to become a little confused about what he needs to do to pass my guard. I could tell by how he's switching from technique to technique without committing to anything. I used to do the same thing. You have to commit to a certain pass. If you commit to a pass, it forces your partner to defend, and then you could go to the other side. So there he tried to grab, grab my head with my legs in between us, with my knees in between us still. It's a very poor decision from that position because it opens you up to arm bars, triangles. You, it, you break your own posture. Here I'm just holding them off me with frames. Again, the best way to develop frames is by not exploding, not trying to escape like a wild person. Just hold them off. So here I'm holding them off and I, I could stay like that forever. It's a structurally efficient framing method. You don't want to frame in a manner that your knees and elbows are away from your body and you're trying to hold somebody off because they'll just flatten that frame. Here I'm letting him get double wrist control because I know both my feet are on his hips. So again, as I say with so many of these roles, what he should be looking for is two on one leg control, AKA leg drag, double ankle, just throw my leg to the side. It's a little sloppier, but more effective than trying to pass without addressing my leg frames and hooks. Here, he should have just climbed me straight up. He should have just slid his knees upward towards my waist and, and chest. See, I'm, I'm already wor worrying about that by putting my hand on, on his knee. I don't want him climbing up me. So I'm distracting him with double wrist control. I'm looking to reach around and grab his chin and roll him over. I've been doing this a lot lately. And there, there it is. So it's a great sweep. I call it the chin strap sweep. I'm sure I didn't invent it. But it definitely works. So now I have him. See, I'm climbing him the way I said he should have climbed me earlier, by sliding my knees up his back, sliding my knee towards his chest. Now I'm going to an S mount, even though my leg is still trapped. See, I'm giving him room to, to roll onto his back by sliding my right knee over very incrementally. So he's thinking, oh, I could go that way. And then he just ends up on his back because he didn't realize it, but he was pretty much leaning on my leg. Now I'm in a relaxed guard. He bucked. I went to side control. I never hold on to any position for dear life because if you do, you become stuck to your partner and it's easy for them to roll you over. Also, when I went to side control, I instantly went to the gift wrap. So... In no, if I was doing gi, I would have grabbed his collar and went for the choke already. But since it's no gi, I'm just going to control him. I was picking him up to take his back. 
because I couldn't get the arm bar. He's too strong and he knew it was coming. So now he rolls flat again to avoid having his back taken, which is a pretty good idea because from here it's going to be easier to escape. But he needs to make the A-frame with his hands and push under my chin. I see people on the professional level when they get their guard passed, they don't do that. Their guard is amazing. But when they get it passed, it's almost like they're not used to being there. Where at me at my age, I'm very used to being there. <laughs> so my defense got good. Helio Gracie once said, I might not submit you, but you'll never submit me. And, you know, I think he was saying that more in his 90s, 80s, and 90s. Because, of course, you're going to pass his guard. He didn't have an unpassable guard when he was 95. But I could promise you, you'll never submit him. Because technically, after you pass his guard, he has a game that most people can only imagine. So there I was able to get my leg out. I like staying in three-quarter mount because eventually I'm able to free my leg. Here I'm in an S mount. I got my knee all the way up his back. I have his head cupped. It's going to be really hard for him to get out of here. Now I could focus on just holding the position, which a lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you're competing, you pass the guy's guard, you hold side control, in five minutes you win the match. Others like to go for submissions. I like to do a little bit of both. You have to know how to maintain the position, and then when you go for the submission, it's just a cherry on top. It's almost like no effort at all. So here I'm just pulling on his arm, but gently. I'm not ripping it. I'm not going crazy. My face isn't red. I saved that for my ankle locks. Just kidding. So there, eventually, I was able to go to the top of where the leverage was towards his wrist and grip and just separate it and gently pull his arm out. Now he's explaining how he appreciates that I didn't explode into the arm bar and he was able to try to fight it off and feel safe fighting it off because he knew if I broke the grip, I wouldn't just pop his arm. That's my teacher, Mike. He just walked by. So we talked a little bit about what happened and now we're going to continue the roll. As I said, I'm trying to extend my rolls. Not every student is aware of that, so sometimes when the round ends, they, they kind of go away pretty quickly. Here I used a little bit of speed. It looked probably faster than, it wasn't fast, it was precise. The footwork was precise. If you really analyze it, I wasn't moving quickly. I was moving more, I think, I'd like to think with precision. So this is one of my favorite pins. From here, I could reach with my left hand around his head and go to the, the uh, howdy choke, but I'm not doing that because as you see, I'm playing, I'm playing reactionary. The first proactive move I made was passing his guard, and that was after eight minutes of rolling. To the right is, is uh, Frank and Mike. Frank is the, uh, wearing the black rash guard. He's a really good black belt at the academy. And, and, and instructor, and uh, Mike, obviously, fourth degree, Henzo Gracie, black belt. So don't be too distracted from watching them roll. <laughs> They're a little bit better than me. There, I think I was able to pop out the Kimura. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention either. I was looking at my instructors. So now we're resetting. What he should be doing is grabbing my wrists. My wrists are there for the grabbing, and he doesn't even try. Look, right here. What's to prevent them from grabbing my wrist? He's looking for a, an underhook or an arm drag that I've already identified. So you have to grab the wrist, switch to the underhook, switch to the arm drag, pull on my head, kick out my knee. His right foot doesn't do anything there, and now I have it trapped. This is a little pass I was experimenting with. I lifted his leg with one hand and pulled him down with the other. I did it backwards to the most efficient way. Again, being a little bit experimental. Here he's holding me off with his right arm, but that's really hard to, to maintain. You could do it for a little while, but as you can see, his arm's getting tired, and I'm just waiting it out. 
I'm not even pressuring. I'm not destroying him with knee pressure. I'm not doing a lot of the things I could be. I just kind of have him in like a wrestling pin. And now I went to north-south. He spun around again. It's not that he doesn't have good responses. He does, obviously. I just know the counters just due to experience. Here, I'm not looking for anything in particular. I was kind of hoping he would open up more and give me something obvious, but he did a good job of defending there. His right arm is serving him no real help. At all moments, you should be attached to your partner if they're in range. So here I'm explaining when you get into that position, you got to make a little space and bring your knee in. And this might sound obvious, but I notice a lot of people kind of forget about that, you know, especially if you've been training a couple of years. I know it's hard to imagine, but I've forgotten more things than a lot of people still have to learn. So now I'm in close guard. When he went to go up and grab my head, you saw my, I put like a karate hand up. That was just to stop him at his biceps. Because if he goes to sit up and I grab his biceps, he really doesn't have anything from there. Now he's turning to a knee shield. Again, you see that right foot just floating. He could be pressing on my knee. He could kick my knee out with that foot. He could put it into a spider guard position. You don't want to have limbs just floating. So now I'm very gently and pretty easily and incrementally passing his guard. We've gotten behind the two masters here. I'm going to post a roll with Frank uh, one of these days. He really kills me, but he does it in a technical way. So now we're resetting. We're 12 minutes into the round. I have to give Brian credit on this. 12 minutes into the round, and he's still going strong. He's in great shape. He clearly works out. His strength is really good. I wish I had his strength. But I'll take my skill over his strength any day. So there I went to pass his guard. I think the round ended. I'm giving him some advice. He's always very appreciative, and he tries to implement what I tell him right away. There he's just explaining about how I was able to climb him and it seemed like he couldn't stop it but it was just structural and I was using proper grips and pressure but not too much. So now here we go. This is Rory. Rory is a I think he's like 240 pounds. He's, he's a giant and I would describe him more as a gentle giant. He likes guard. He likes pressure passing if he can get to it. And here you go. Um, you see this pass a lot. I tried to do it with one hand. I held down his arm and then I just passed. I didn't have all my connective grips. And again, that's experimental. That's not something I'm going to do if I'm worried about uh, the, the guy being more skillful. There he tried to get me in a headlock, but I sensed it coming, so I popped up and I got my own. I'm looking for the guillotine, but he is, and I know I say this all the time, super strong. <laughs> I don't know if he looks it, but when he grabs you, it just feels like uh, the world is ending. As you could see by my red face when I came up for that guillotine that I couldn't finish. So here I'm letting him get double wrist control. I got, he, he's got one foot and one wrist, which again, doesn't serve him best. You'll see this lack of leg drag again. There I was able to push off and reset. I call that making space. If you're ever getting smothered and you can't sweep the guy, just make space. Just kick away at his hip, push it, push off his hip. Not hard, not in a way that's going to send him flying in a controlled manner. So here I'm trying to break his posture, and I'm going to see. I'm starting to kick his knee out, but he, he, he avoided it, defended it. Now I'm pulling him into a triangle. Again, he's just so strong. He was able to frame with his arms and posture up. I knew I had to let go. 
Now I'm in full guard, which is hard on him because he's so big. And I don't really like full guard. I find it boring, even though it's an advan uh, advantageous position for me. As you can see, look, I'm holding his bicep away. I always hold by the bicep. I don't try to grab the, the wrist or the shoulder. I, I instantly frame off the bicep. He wants to wrap his arms around underneath me. I could feel just by his intention. Um, that's another point. When you're very loose, you can feel the other, your partner's intentions. When you're very stiff, you can't feel anything. So here he, he has almost has the double uh, body, uh, body lock, single body lock. So I'm framing on his face with my arm. I could be doing it in a worse way. I could really stick my elbow in his cheek if I wanted. So he's really trying there. He's trying to put my left arm under my back and grab it with his right arm, which is great if you're going against somebody who doesn't know what you're trying to do. I mean, <laughs> if he catches you there, you'll never come back. There, I almost was looking for a buggy choke, but I don't really know it that well, and he was able to flatten me. But eventually, I want to catch a buggy choke. I really enjoy watching Craig Jones do it. So here I'm trying to make angles, trying to make space. He's holding down my foot. Here we go. He almost has a two on one on one leg. And look at that. He almost passed my guard, but he made a mistake and he overcommitted and I was able to slip out and take his back from a terrible position. So there I felt like I was losing it and I just came up and I went right to that grip. Now I, pro I know I'm probably never gonna finish the arm bar on him just due to his size and strength, but it's still a great controlling position, the Kimura trap as they call it. I can't even link my hands, he's, he's just breaking his arm away. So here I'm gonna try to see if I keep working on this, if I can weaken him over time. Even though his arm is strong now, if it's in a weak, fundamentally unsound position and I'm able to keep pulling on it, not hard, in a gentle manner that wears him down, eventually I can get it. Or it's going to increase my chances of getting it exponentially. So there he used his legs to rock up and I just let him out. I wasn't going to jump all over him. I wasn't going to make big athletic movements to compensate for the fact that I didn't have the proper positioning. And I let him get to his knees. Here we're wrist fighting. I'm grabbing his head looking for the snap down, but it's like snapping down a, a giant statue. So I tried to make space for the snap down, but he did some good wrist control. Now we're knee fighting. I know how much everyone loves that. You can't be on your knees for a second. Otherwise, uh, it's not jujitsu. That's sarcasm. So he's trying to pull me in again. He's got one on his one on my ankle, one on his, his wrist. Even if he got the pulling that he was looking for, what did he really expect from that? What he needed was leg drag, arm drag, break my posture by pulling my neck down. Because now my my legs still in knee shield. And my other leg is in uh, half guard. And we just bumped into Joe. Joe will be the next partner in my video, in this video. And here Rory's slowing down a little bit, thank God. Not that he was going crazy, but he's hard to keep up with sometimes with his size and strength. Now he's being overly self-critical in my opinion. <laughs> he's saying he can't control my legs and he couldn't get the, uh, my left arm behind my back to underhook and pull and grab with his right arm. Which actually I do on Scott in another one of the videos. I actually have a short doing that sweep where I get the guy's arm behind his back and I'm able to get on top. So we're just discussing a few things. Now Joe comes over. Rory is impressed with my uh, jujitsu. <laughs> He's a very nice guy, very big guy. I think both of these guys are in law enforcement, like SWAT team, stuff like that.
So <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Joe, as you can see, he's the type of guy that works out every day. He works on cars. He is your blue collar guy. And he has the strength to show it. He tries not to use it. Since I met him and I explained a lot of my concepts to him, he's, he's been very impressed and he realized that he can always add in the strength whenever he wants. But if he could roll with no strength and less speed, he could develop more technique in the lab. Always very respectful, having a pre-roll banter. You know, and I would like to say also, if Joe turns it on and uses all his strength and speed, he will beat me every time because his strength and speed are just overwhelming for me combined, you know, with size. I don't know how much he weighs, but I feel like my torso is the size of his calf. But it makes for an interesting role because he tries not to use strength. Now, a guy like him, even trying not to use it, he's still so, so strong. He, he can't just turn it off. And you can't expect people to turn off their strength. And you should know how to counter it. So I know I sound like I'm contradicting myself, but you need times where you're able to work on your frames and you need times where you're able to learn how to go around his strength. He loves my wrist fighting, by the way. He may even comment on this video. So here I'm looking for different types of sweep. He's doing a great job avoiding it. He really is. I would say technically, out of these uh, batch of blue belts, he's one of the most proficient. And there he goes. He pops into an ankle lock. But it felt like almost like a heel hook. But before he could really squeeze, I tapped, which is how I am. I, I, my ankles are very tiny. Most women would kill for my ankles. <laughs> and wrists. <laughs> but not for a man, not so much. So now we're resetting. There was nothing wrong with what he did. It was perfect. You know, I have to identify when that ankle lock is coming. And uh, my footlock defense is, it's, it's developing, but it's nowhere near the rest of my game. My guard passing is, you know, an 8 out of 10, and my footlock defense is like a 4 out of 10. So there I was almost able to push him and come up. He went for that knee slice. And when he came up from it, he was off balance, and I was able to push him over and basically get a sweep, I think. I don't know how that scored. So now we're wrist fighting. He has his foot on my, on my knee, which isn't a bad thing. When my knee gets close enough, he puts his foot there. He doesn't reach for it. As you can see, I'm breathing a little heavier than what most of you are used to seeing. But I'm 23 minutes in, 24 minutes into rolling and I'm no spring chicken. So there he almost did a good sweep. I couldn't tell you what was technically wrong. It's a sweep that I'm not that familiar with. I have an understanding, uh, underlying understanding of the uh, principles, but not enough to give you a accurate breakdown. So here I'm in open guard. It's okay to play open guard, but you want your feet and legs to be doing something. So I'm not sure what happened there. He tried to take his leg away, and then I got into a passing position. He can hold me off like this all day. Like some people, I say, oh, if you have inefficient frames, I could make them tired. His strength and endurance is such that I probably could just lay on his bench pressing arms all day, and he wouldn't get tired. <laughs> So here we're having a good battle. Sorry we went out of frame. I don't have a cameraman. So we're resetting. As always, Joe is very respectful and complimentary about my wrist fighting. Now I'm explaining that when he plays butterfly guard, he has to be more flexible. If you play butterfly guard and when you lay back, if your knees are close together, 
It's easy for me to push them, shuck them to the side and pass. Because if one thing is a weakness in Joe's game, I think, is his guard. Guard passing, excellent. I bet if you ask Joe what his favorite guard was, he might not even have a favorite guard, and that's a problem. But at Blue Belt, we're developing these things still. As you can see, his footwork is very good when he's passing. Oh, and that ended the round very respectfully. Guys, if you like this, if you like uh, having a few rolls in a row, please leave it in the comments. And uh, if you want to support the channel, I have a merch store. I, you could buy me a coffee. The links are in the description. Thank you for watching, and please like, share, and if you haven't already, subscribe.